Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Amber. Amber is a two to four player game which will be taking trick taking actions. You will be pulling cards from the top of a deck and attempting to not get the bad cards while also attempting to gather all the good cards. Now you can keep pulling from the deck and as you do, provided you want to stop, you're gonna get a lot of actions based on the cards you choose. However, if you choose not to stop and you end up getting a lot of bad cards, it can stop you in your, in your tracks and then you only get one action. But not only is it a trick taking game, you're also gonna get four cards in front of you that you're gonna have tableau management options. You're going to be able to place more cards on top of these cards as uh, basically upgrades to increase the amount of workflow you can do. You're basically a jewelry crafter in a medieval setting and you're going across different locations from town to town to try and sell your amber and or your jewelries. Of course there's going to be things that are going to try and, try and stop you like thieves and other evil things. You might encounter a serpent or even a red demon and those guys are also going to negatively impact you. There's going to be two rounds to the game. One is the basic aspect. After all those cards are done you're going to then shuffle in the evil cards, the harder cards, and then play another round. After all the cards have been used, whoever has the most gold at the end is going to be the winner. All right, let me go and show you the game. Here we have Amber and all of the components in the game. I've went ahead and already given up the setup, so we'll explain not only the setup, but also what you're going to be getting. The first thing you're going to be getting is all the different jewels here, and they all represent different colors, yellow being the weakest and red uh, and then blue, uh, uh, blue being the next strongest and then red being the strongest. You're also going to be getting different kinds of gold. This is, of course, the smaller variant, and this is the larger. These are 10, these are 1. You'll be getting three separate decks of cards. Uh, the first deck of cards is going to be your round one cards, and there's going to have a different bunch of different things in there as far as bad guys and upgrades and whatnot. You're going to also get your action card deck, and you're going to be able to draw these things as well, start as one with one, and they're going to let you do certain things throughout the game. And finally, your round two deck. These are basically stronger card improvements and stronger negatives that will be shuffled into the deck after the first round. There's three separate cards you're getting in the game. This is the one where uh, when stuff steals from you, you're going to be putting it here, and if you get a certain action card, you're going to be able to try and get the, the money back or get other people's money back. And then of course you have your demon and your serpent. The demon is basically something that is going to come at the second round in which players who have the most gold will have to sit with it. And then the serpent is if you get five cards or more during the push your luck phase, you're going to be given the serpent. These are negative cards that are going to affect you throughout the game, which I'll explain a little bit more. The setup's pretty simple. You're going to start with the first deck here, set the second deck aside, and it's going to have uh, little symbols on the bottom uh, right hand side, which have little time symbols, meaning second round. Set these uh, these event cards next to each other. You've got your escorts, three for each player. Each player is also going to get four cards. You're going to have like, the woods card, the alchemy card, the traveler card, and the village card. And you're going to set on these little uh, upgrade tokens here. That's going to represent how many uh, upgrades you have and how, how much you can produce based on your little forest tile here. And you'll be able to produce more and more as the game progresses. Uh, make sure you set them up in this order as well as having one yellow uh, jewel on each of these uh, potions for each player. You're also going to all get three gold for upgrades to use in the first round and an action card from the top of the action deck. After you go ahead and set this, uh, this up, this is for four players, it'd be for three here and two for here, then you can go ahead and begin the game, which we'll talk about now as far as the phases of turn go. So to play Amber, it's fairly simple. There's a certain amount of phases in the game, and it's going to basically involve A, pushing your luck, B, actions, then you're going to sell thing, you know, your jewelry for gold, then you're going to use the gold for improvements, and then you're going to check to see if demons are going to be placed onto your board, or, or next to you for your next turn. The first thing is going to be, of course, pushing your luck, which is the route phase. You're going to be taking cards from the base deck of cards here and flipping them over face up. You're also going to start with any demons that you have next to you on your tableau. They'll be actually added to you as a negative. Whenever you get three black cards in front of you, you're going to basically end the push your luck phase and you're only going to get one action. So you have to be very careful about that. Uh, but otherwise, you're going to be getting cards like this one here. This is like an improvement or an upgrade you can choose to use during the upgraded phase. As you draw cards, they're going to give you actions up to seven, I believe. And at five, you're going to get the nasty serpent. At six, you're going to be getting to take a escort. And then at seven, you're going to get an event event card, which is very useful, but the more you push your luck, the better you're going to get, except for that nasty serpent. The serpent is going to count as a negative card, a black card, and so will the demon in the second phase. So you're going to flip, and you're going to flip, and you're going to flip, and then you can choose after every flip to stop. There are certain cards that are going to change that for you, depending on which cards you have, such as this guy here. It makes you look at the next card of the deck and place it up, and if that is another bad guy, you're done. Uh, certain bad guys you can also fight, and it's going to have fight symbols on them, and you'll be 
able to use your escorts to remove them from the, the game. However, they have to be placed first and their ability has to be used. It's just a way to counter the three different baddies on the board uh, and remove them before you actually get in trouble. If you have no escorts, you can't do that, however. After you're done placing down your push to luck phase, you've either chosen to stop or you've gotten three baddies. The next phase is going to begin, which is the, com the action phase. And actions are based on the number of cards you have down below. So if I have four cards, I get four actions. And the actions are as follows. You can simply, A, gather your amber or resources from your card here. And they have different, uh, it says different things, like the forest says how many, how many pieces you're going to get. And on here is where you place it. So for one action, you'll gain one gold with this card or one, well, I guess, one of these minerals here. And then for one action, you can simply move the, uh, the minerals or amber from one side of the field to the town side of the field. And after you've done that, there's one other action you can have if there's a additional uh, selling card on the field, you can choose to sell uh, by moving cards that, that are on a field space over to that card so you can put more cards onto your town space, which I'll explain more in a little bit. After you've done that, it's going to go onto the um, the commerce step in which you're going to sell everything that is on the town cards for gold. If you have certain amounts, it's going to tell you how much gold those things are worth and it'll be based on what is down on the board. After you do that, you go on into the improvements and you can, you can select one improvement either that is in front of you from, from what you've pushed your luck, the cards, or you can choose to increase your forest and you can spend the gold that it was required to do so. It will thusly gain you more and more jewels and amber throughout the game as you do that. Not only that though, after you do that, you're going to check for demons and demons are going to be for the first phase, just the serpent. If you have played five or more cards as you push your luck to phase, you're going to get that card. Unfortunately, it's going to stay with you until somebody else chooses to do five as well. And also, not only that, but on the second phase of the game, you're going to also add the uh, gold demon in, which is basically whoever has the most gold at the end of the round is going to be the, the end of a turn is going to be the one that gets the demon. And so if you have both of them, they'll both be in front of you. And that's two out of the three baddies already. The game will continue going back and forth with those phases until the entire deck is done, in which case you're going to then take the additional cards that have the time symbol, shuffle them up into the main deck and add the demon to play and continue. Anything that is taken from you by bad cards are going to go on to this little thieves den here and you can choose to get them if you have an action card that allows you to use three escorts to either choose all the gold or all the minerals and jewels on there. Um, that is the basic idea of the game and the actions and the rounds. Let's go ahead and show you how it plays in a couple of turns. Back to the game, as you can see, I went ahead and set up for two players, and just like I was saying before for setup, you got three escorts, you start with this at the one on the forest, you get one of these yellow embers, and then of course you get your four cards, three gold, and your action cards. We're going to start with this player over here, he's got an action card as well, whenever he sells, he can gain two more gold by playing that card, pretty useful. And the first step is going to be your route, or and your days, which is basically your push to look phase, and whenever you draw cards from the top here, you can choose to stop, this is the first one here, it is a upgrade card, it shows you the symbol down here, which reflects this one here the cost when you want to choose to use it for an improvement and uh, the resources here you can save on this location each one of these is something relevant first of all this one here represents this one here this says whenever you take this action you get to take two of these yellows when you get down to here it says you get to choose either three yellows or one blue and finally over here gives you just one red uh, so that is going to be how you improve there this tells you how many either ors you can select so if you want to move three yellow from here to here that's one action or one blue from here to here it's not both of them and then, of course, how many of the blue and or yellow you could have on this location, which means that red can't be put on here. So upgrading this all the way to here is not a good idea until you've improved this. Anyway, back to the game here. We've got the first card here, which is a yellow card or a white card, which is good. We don't want three black ones. It's our only thing. Oh, bam. Here's a black one. We have to do both of the things first before we can try and uh, just, we've got to do all the actions first before, before we try and destroy it. And black cards can be destroyed and some of them can't be based on this symbol here. These are the escorts that can destroy them. So we're going to flip over another card. That's what this symbol says says. Okay, now we can choose if we want to get this escort and remove her by simply using an escort, uh, use this monster by removing her with an escort. Uh, we're not going to do that. We'll just go ahead and leave that here. We're going to move another card down. That's four. It's only one black card so far. A lot of good stuff. And we're going to move to another one. Bam. Okay, unfortunately, he's not a good one. And he's going to take a gem from us. If it says red, that means, and we don't have a red, it means the next lowest one until we actually can put one on him. And of course, there's another fight symbol. So if I want to, I can go ahead and use my escort to remove the card and also get my gem back so I might I'm, I'm probably gonna do that so this is gonna go there and I'll get my gem back but it doesn't count as an action so I have to flip it up with a new one BAM five remember whenever you have five 
you're going to have to take this at the end of the turn, and this is going to actually count as one free action for you, but also one black card as well. In the second phase, this is the person at the end of the turn who has the most gold is going to get this guy's. So you might actually get two black cards at the start of your turn if you're unlucky during the second phase of the game. We'll go ahead and take another card here and flip it over. I am pretty sure lucky. That's six. Six is good because that's going to allow us to get another action card whenever we have six, uh, as long as we end with six, of course. If we end with three blacks, it doesn't matter. We only get one action. I think I'll go for the big kaboom. Bam! All seven. That's really, really nice. That's going to give me a bonus action card and a bonus escort. And it's also going to, at the end of the uh, round here, at the end of the turn, give me that serpent. I'm also going to get to use seven actions. The actions are as follows. You can simply produce, you can um, move from here to here, or if you have two things to sell, like this one and this one, you can choose to use one of them as an early sale and one of them as your free uh, commerce sale. Uh, and they could be different costs depending on the type of the round and the type of cards that are on the board. So for the first action I can choose, I can go one and two, I can then move this for three, and then I could choose to go like this, bam, four, and then I can go five and six, and then I can move these two for seven. After I'm done doing that, that's going to end my actions. I go on to the commerce phase, which says I can sell here and I can sell on the bonus if I had one, which I do. That's going to give me, well, for this one here, it's going to give me plus one for each yellow. So that's three right there. And it's going to, for this one over here, give me plus one. So that's two more. That's five. So I'm going to take five of these additional golds and put them over here. And then after I've done that, I've finished my commerce phase. I go into my improvements. And improvements means I can select any one card from here or I can choose to spend one gold to get a, um, an escort here. I could also choose to spend the gold to move these trees up for better, better improvements, obviously here and here are better. Um, and let's see, what are my options? This one here, this one, this one in here. These are gonna tell me where I can upgrade to. I can either choose the city, I can choose the alchemy, or I can choose the, the guy who allows me to move from back and forth. I think we'll go with the alchemist one here. It, mm, no, no, I'm not gonna go with that one. Um, oh, in fact, oh, sorry, I, I had this up here. Technically, it would only it's only going to be one. Luckily, I, I, I played it right, but I actually had uh, the wrong card in there. <laughs> That's okay, though. You get the idea. It's one instead of the two, which was what it showed on the card. Sorry about that. But I can choose now. I can choose now to upgrade it, which I will. It'll cost me three gold here. And that will allow me now to do two as opposed to one. So if you get confused there, that's why. When you start the game off, you only get one for the one tree. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and uh, look at the... Uh, after we finish that, that's our one improvement. Now we're going to check for demons. In this case, we have five or more. So we're going to take the snake. And the rest of these cards are actually burned and put into the discard pile. Okay, moving on to the next round over here. For the next play or the next player's turn, he's going to start off by simply flipping over again. Oh, great. A bad guy here. That's one of three. He gets to look at the next one. Oh, he'll take it. He might as well, because he can only get one action if he burns anyway. And this says I have to flip over another one before I fight. Ugh, all three black. That is no good. So that means he's only going to get one action here. He's got no upgrades and he has no commerce. Ouch, that can happen sometimes. That's how push your luck works. So for one action, he's simply going to put one on here, because he has a one tree and it says one yellow. And uh, after that, he's going to be done with that section. He has nothing he can use for commerce because he doesn't have anything over here. And he also has no sellable uh, cards here, allowing him to sail. And then he goes on to his improvements. Luckily, he can spend two gold, just like that, which will allow him to move his tree up, his forest up. So in the next turn, whenever he chooses to use an action, instead of putting one here, he can put two here, which is pretty good. He could have also chosen to get an escort. And he could choose to play this as well. So he's gonna, he could choose to play this card for an escort. He'll just choose to save it for now, I suppose. So now moving on to the next player's turn, he's going to obviously start with the demon because of the amount of cards he played last time. He played five, this player only played three, but only got one action. So he starts with one bad card. He'll start flipping them over now. So he's got one right there, that is an improvement. That's pretty good. Uh, there's two, he's gonna look at the next card. That's a solid one as well, he'll play that. And the question is, does he wanna go farther? He Probably doesn't, because four cards is pretty good. And the last player only got one action, so he's going to be smart and stick with this. That gives him four actions. And of course, he's going to be able to get two right here. So for this first action, that's two. For his second action, that is going to be three. And then his final action is going to be four. He can only pull three over here because that's what it says here. That's how many he can fit here. And then luckily he can also sell because he has this sale card out right here. Now he's going to go on to his commerce section. He's going to use this card to sell. That's going to give him three gold. Let me just put it over here. And then he's going to move on to his improvements. He could choose if he wants to get this guy here. And I think he'll do that for two gold. He can remove these guys here. And then he'll go to place this on here. Bam, he's got a new, a new dude. 
So that means he can either choose five yellow, two blue, or one red. Pretty solid. He's still going to keep the serpent at the end of the game because he still had it uh, last time previously. And these cards are going to burn. And the next player is going to get to go. And it's going to continue like this, uh, upgrading and improving as this deck goes through. There's different bad guys that are going to be taking your loot, letting you look at different cards, higher upgrades. Uh, this card's going to have to make you play an extra card as well as you can choose to battle it. You're going to have different action cards in here as well. Some of them are going to allow you to to uh, gain the uh, escorts here. This one is going to allow you to gain bonuses of three um, to p for sale selling. Uh, minus three when you're when somebody is selling, so you can choose to place on your opponent. Uh, this one here, when you're moving from one one place to another, you can have an opponent lose up to four, so on and so forth. These are different actions that will happen: moving the demon around, moving the serpent around. Uh, not only that, though, but after all these cards are emptied, then it goes to the next round of the game, round two. And round two is going to implement these cards and the demon here. Not only that, but whenever somebody takes a uh, money from you and uh, you don't kill them, it's going to go over here onto this card here. And there's an action card in here which will allow you to select. Uh, for three escorts to either take all the gems or even all the gold on this location. There are monsters in here that can take away your gold and it will actually require multiple escorts to fight. And then of course there's bonuses, uh, bonus locations that are very, very powerful but cost a little more gold. You just add them to the deck, you go ahead and uh, shuffle them in, include the demon so that people can get the demon because at the beginning of the second round, at the end of the first turn on the second round, whoever has the most gold is going to be keeping this guy and you're always going to be checking at the end to see who has it. That means you can actually get two of these guys at the end of the game so it kind of puts a uh, pressure on the player who's doing well and like i said after all these cards have been emptied you're going to check to see who has the most gold and whoever does is the winner if it's a tie it's actually going to go down to i believe whoever has the most gems or something like that you can look it up in the rule book but that's the basic idea of how you play the game amber let's go ahead and talk about it so do I have any caveats for the game? Well, first of all, obviously there's the serpent and the demon and they're going to be coming out. Remember, it's very important to check for them on your turn. Uh, if you have to play this guy, you put it in front and it's going to count as a negative towards you, provided you play five or more cards. If somebody else chooses to play five or more cards during their turn, they're going to end up getting them. And then the demon works the same way, but it's involving gold. At the end of the turn, whoever has the most gold, no matter who it is, is going to be taking this. And you can kind of function this guy if you want. Like maybe you have nine gold and your opponent has uh, eight, you can spend two getting rid of this guy and giving it to your opponent, which is a good way of dealing with these things. But you don't ever want to have two of them. So what do I think about the game Amber? Well, first of all, this game is from uh, kind of a reskin from the game Narco Empire, uh, which I first reviewed, uh, with also different mechanics. It has uh, the ability to uh, gain cards like here, and, you're, and the theme has been completely changed. Uh, first of all, what I can say about the theme of this game is I really, really, really like it in comparison. Uh, I don't mind the whole moving drugs around and all that kind of stuff and dealing with the cops and whatnot. That's fine, but it's not really as much for me. It is cool. I did think it was cool at uh, the time, and I still do. However, I really like the idea of being a traveling merchant, going through the forest, uh, having all this amber in your hands, and trying to avoid all the thieves and whatnot, as well as having other traveling merchants kind of doing the same thing and kind of competing with you at the same time. It does bring a little bit more theme into the game. I really, really like the artwork more, e even more. I like the feel of this game. It reminds me kind of like El Dorado, when a really, really popular game I got to review a while ago, as far as the different style of artwork goes. It has this kind of noir-esque uh, fantasy. I don't know, it's kind of a weird, bizarre feeling to me, but I really, really, really enjoy it. And I do feel more immersed. As I was playing this game, I was like, oh, I remember this game. Oh, and wow, I it makes a lot more sense now because of this scene. It functions better. And using the different gems and whatnot really functioned pretty well as well. I felt like I was just moving around different jewels and whatnot as opposed to using drugs. And of course the gold, collecting gold, because that is like the more medieval style of currency. I like that aspect. I like the feel of all the different um, the components and whatnot. And the fact that the Kickstarter campaign will actually have different amber pieces is cool. Uh, of course, uh, what I can say about the game as far as whether you like it or not, it is a pusher luck style game. Sometimes as you saw in the, re in, the, in the playthrough, you can get completely hosed and sometimes you can get remarkably, you know, you can do really, really well. And so for some people, people aren't going to like that, right? Like nobody's going to like on their turn to get only one action. But that's the cost of the game. There's a chance of that happening. Maybe it's because you didn't actually try and fight the monster when you could have used an escort. Or maybe you just got really, really, really unlucky. But of course, there is the stuff in the game that kind of uh, negates the players from doing too well, keeping it more more, more fair and balanced in a way, and it does work pretty well. I was winning really well. I was winning, the uh, uh, first game we played, I was doing really, really well, winning, 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 and then I ended up getting all the nasty cards because I was doing so well, and my opponent caught up, 
but I sort of skimmed in by move, manipulating those cards and using my action cards to my benefit. Uh, there's certain cards that are more powerful in the deck. Obviously, there's cards that actually move your tree value. So if you have a three, you can give it to your opponent, making good under a two, which can be very, very detrimental, as well as the fact that you'll be able to use your escorts uh, to fight the bigger monsters, and if you can't, you can lose gold. Uh, overall, it's a fun game. You're going to like this game if you like in, like Push Your Luck. Uh, any of those Push Your Luck games, Celestia is one of them that comes to mind. Uh, that one's more of a cooperative, and I say that loosely, Push Your Luck game. This is definitely more of a competitive style. This one also actually has the tableau management, so if you enjoy a little bit of tableau management, the feel of worker placement, you'll enjoy the game Amber. If you're interested, you can go check it out on Kickstarter in the description down below. The game Amber, I recommend it. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go and check out those other videos. Can YouTube like, subscribe, and comment? It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as checking out the game Amber, the game of, of pushing your luck through the forest, avoiding bad things, and, uh, messing with your opponents all at the same time. You can also go ahead and check out our friends everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to dodging demons in the forest with you next time.